Ms. Paulison. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I thank Minister Graceful for sharing the upcoming plans, um, such as the Flow reverse technology to improve new water recovery, the fifth desalination plant in Jurong Island, and also the um, food waste treatment plant at the Changi Water Treatment Works. Now, these uh, are all very game changing circular energy and self sufficient strategies to ensure our water supply in the long run is, uh, is uh, secured. Uh, however, these are all huge infrastructure investment. DPM Hing announced in his budget speech that uh, green bonds worth $19 billion of sustainability-focused projects will be set aside, such as the Tuas Nexus project. I'd like to know if MSC is open to expanding the scope of game-changing sustainability-focused large-scale infrastructure projects, projects so as to accelerate the pace of our sustainability efforts and also our own energy self-reliance. Thank you. Thank you, Chairman. I'd like to thank the member for the clarification. Uh, MSE will support um, efforts to promote the industry in sustainability. Um, we will do what is necessary, but fundamentally, we must make sure that our large infrastructure must meet our needs. Uh, we will want our infrastructure to also meet our sustainability goals. With that, really, as the, the basic assumption, uh, we will be happy to work with any agencies um, uh, to promote sustainability services, including financial reporting and verification. Thank you, Chairman. Uh, first, I would like to thank uh, SMTO and all the ministers, uh, the SMS and MOS, for all their informative and exciting speeches. It is really very exciting. Uh, I have two questions, one on hawker culture and one on the uh, electric vehicle. First, on the hawker culture, I would like to ask uh, SMS and Mikor, with the declining number of uh, hawkers expected in the future, does she think it is viable to continue to increase the number of hawker centres? Um, I'm a bit worried that in the future, we may have a scenario whereby our hawker centres are no longer serving local food, but more and more foreign food. So is that a scenario that is acceptable, if that happens? Second question on the electric vehicle. Uh, what kind of changes in electricity demand pattern are we expecting with the EV introduction? And how are we changing our grid system to cater for that? In other words, can our grid system cope with the surge in electricity demand? And together with that, um, is there going to be a very significant uh, increase in electricity prices going forward due to this structural change. Of course, we have the cyclical change and the oil price and all that. That cannot be uh, uh, controlled. But with the change to the introduction of the electrical vehicle, there will be a structural change in our uh, energy uh, market. Will that lead to a significant rise in electricity price? Thank you. Uh, let me share with uh, members that our the vacancy rate for our hawker centres uh, managed by NEA is actually very low. It's about 2%. Uh, and every month when we tender, there will always be uh, you know, bidders for these stalls. 
through our various uh, programs to attract uh, a new generation of hawkers uh, to you know, run the hawker stalls. Uh, we also actually have uh, many applicants. In fact, for our HDB, HDP, the Hawker Development Program that we recently initiated, uh, 200 has actually gone through the training program, 66 have completed the apprenticeship, 46 are now looking for stalls to start their incubation stall phase. Um, and indeed, you know, even as we, um, we have built seven new hawker centres, 13 is coming up, um, uh, 10 are actually in design construction, one in planning stage, the other two we have not announced the details. Uh, we also have many requests uh, from actually many members of this house uh, for a hawker centre. So uh, as I've said, you know, the member is not correct to say that hawker centres are declining in popularity. With regards to the food, I think uh, recently, you know, we uh, had uh, our hawker culture listed in, in uh, UNESCO representative list, uh, and we need to sustain. We want to sustain the hawker trade as well as, uh, you know, uh, safeguard our hawker culture. To do this, we also need to ensure that the food served as well as the environment of the hawker centre evolves according to the needs of Singaporeans. Uh, and increasingly, um, you know, all kinds of food will be served, uh, cosmopolitan, because we are a cosmopolitan, multicultural, uh, multiracial country. So I don't think we uh, you know, need to be too concerned about this. What we need to do is ensure that our hawker centres continue to provide affordable, delicious food in a clean environment. As regards uh, heritage food, we also have programs. Uh, recently, we uh, announced the Hawker Succession Program, and that is actually for veteran hawkers who want to retire, who don't have anyone to take over the stalls, and they don't mind passing on their culinary skills and recipes to a new breed of hawkers. And we are starting this. Uh, we have 70 veteran hawkers who are actually uh, mentoring our new breed of hawkers. And uh, I, I think, you know, uh, the, uh, the fact that hawker culture is a pride of everyone in Singapore, uh, there is great hope that we will be able to sustain it together. Sir Yipan Wing. Uh, hang on a second. Order. Please, um, please, please. Mr. Ong Ikan. Evie. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, there was a study done if let's say by 2040 the entire vehicle population runs on electricity and you have charging of these vehicles so of course that's what we call an energy reset so instead of every vehicle having a little combustion engine and generating power you now feed them with electricity and then you generate the power centrally somewhere else and so that increase, the, demand, the, the increase in generation demand is estimated to be about 600 megawatts to 1,200 megawatts peak. Uh, and that is equivalent to one to two generating units. Uh, and one to two generating units is equivalent, equivalent to 8 to 16 percent of the current generation power. So that's what we meant by a energy reset if we move the entire vehicle population to electricity. But it is a much more efficient way of generating elect, uh, power and will reduce carbon emission. How will that affect electricity prices? We really can't tell. I don't have a crystal ball. But this is a functioning market. If there's a demand, you will attract plantings, you will attract investments. So, so long as there are plantings of new generation units, you fundamentally do not change the supply and demand situation in the market. Of course, there's downstream that Mr. Leong Man Wai asked, which is the charging the grid infrastructure. I mentioned just now that so long as we don't insist on fast charging, the upgrade of the infrastructure is towards the last mile, which is not huge, not huge. You can, if we can live with slow and overnight charging, it's not a huge investment. And all these... Uh, all these services are already happening in Singapore. You do find these charging stations around in Singapore. They buy from the grid, pay grid charges, and then add to their installation costs plus their margin. They are able to sell 
electricity at 30 to 40 cents per kilowatt hour compared to so the right comparison is compared to paying for diesel and petrol it is actually a lot more attractive and competitive Wing. Thank you, Chairman. I have a clarification for MOS Desmond Tan. What's the impact of the minimum water efficiency labelling scheme on the industry and whether existing equipment needs to be replaced with the two ticks when the minimum water efficiency labelling scheme kicks in? Thank you. Mr. Chairman, I thank the member for the question. Well, PUB has consulted the industry quite extensively on these minimum uh, labelling requirements, and we assess that the requirements will have minimal impact in terms of compliance costs, and in fact, it is expected to be saving water and also save costs for the consumers as well. So maybe I'll just break it down to two parts, because the first part is about the water closet uh, flush valves, which will only affect the industry and not the, com the residential part. So in this aspect, there is minimal impact to the industry as there are sufficient models out there that meet the minimum standard today. And water efficient models are also not more costly than the less water efficient ones. So just to also answer your portion on whether those who are on one take, will they need to be replaced? Uh, the mandatory requirement will only apply if consumers wish to purchase new WC flush valve or replace their existing non-water efficient ones. Uh, so it, there's no requirement for existing uh, flush to be replaced, for all existing flush to be replaced. On the commercial equipment side, we have also done a study and consultation with the industry. And likewise, the impact is not uh, high because there are sufficient models out there. And the cost, in fact, for the uh, more water efficient ones are even lower than those that are less efficient, less water efficient counterparts. And likewise, there's no requirement to replace all existing uh, uh, equipment washers if they don't meet the current requirement, or it's only for those who are either replacing new ones or intending to buy new equipment. Mr. Leoman Wai, the Hawker Fair is calling for us. Uh, thanks, Chairman. I, I just have one uh, more uh, uh, question to uh, seek clarification from uh, Minister Ong. Um, because this is also a question from the resident and, uh, and also I have not enough technical knowledge, what he's saying is that if at night everybody starts to charge the battery for the car, wouldn't it lead to a sudden surge in the, uh, the demand and then it may cause a blackout or things like that? Something similar to like sometimes at night you cannot get access to the internet properly. So, can uh, the Minister enlighten us on this? Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, I think to answer um, Mr. Leong's uh, question, it is indeed a function of uh, supply and demand. What we are doing in terms of the grid is to expand and upgrade the grid. And as I've alluded to earlier in my speech, we will pace it out and we have quite a number of years to invest and to expand and also to upgrade, uh, upgrade the, the grid. Of course, if everyone chooses to go into charging their vehicles over a very, very set period of time, then that peak will go up to about 16%. I think that was the point that uh, Minister Ong talked about. So it, the range is between 8 to 16%. So there are plans that, um, that are needed for between one 600 megawatt generator to two 600 megawatt generator to generate that peak power that's required. Thank you. Mr. Lewis, um, can you very quickly withdraw your amendment? Oh, Mr. Ong. Sorry, Chair. I just want to add one point. If people start to charge their vehicles at night when we all sleep, it's actually quite welcome because at night is when generation is gener uh, the usage is generally lower 
because in the daytime there are lots of economic activity. So if some of this economic activity move to at night, you're charging, actually it smoothens out the generation capacity it is to be welcome. So Dennis Tan, do you have a question? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, just a quick clarification for either Minister Chan or Minister Ong. Um, in my budget debate speech, I um, I mentioned that the government has been. Uh, I understand the government has been studying the potential of battery swapping as a complement to EV charging. Just wondering whether the government can provide uh, the house with some update on the study so far. Thank you. Thank you. I missed out answering that question. I think we don't rule out any technology. And from now to 2030, you can still see more technology, including battery swapping. But I would say this, from the current trend, it has become quite clear, EVs charging has taken off. The electric train has left the station. So you look at whether it's US, Europe, China, they are all going quite big now on electricity charging. Tesla is probably, I, I believe, is the fastest selling EV in the world now. And you can't swap a Tesla battery. Yeah, it's the entire plate, the chassis of the car. So I think it is something that we can write on and start to develop the infrastructure. And if you, if you, um, if you follow my speech just now, we're not going big guns and build a huge infrastructure that can, stand the, that can bear the risk of being stranded should technology move. So if we use existing spare capacity, install last mile installation ch charges, and I don't think we are at great risk of any uh, stranded technology risk. And so um, I think it's a no regrets move based on current trajectory, based on current technological advancement, based on the fact that in a few years time, we're gonna see parity between EVs that you based on charging and IC vehicles. Mr. Lewis, um, you can withdraw your amendment. members for speaking up and I take this opportunity to also thank the office holders and the public servants at PMO, MOE, MND, MSE, MOT, MTI and the, the MSE step boards, PUB, NEA and SFA for all their hard work both in front and behind the scenes. Uh, thank you for the clean air we breathe, the food we eat, the water we drink, for the clean environment we live in and for a healthy planet that we call home. Uh, for releasing the male mosquitoes to you know, make sure the mosquitoes bite us less and of my pet topic, protecting us from secondhand smoke. Uh, but I, I, I believe we have one of the longest COS and I also believe MSC is one of the most loved ministry because we focus on something that Singaporeans love, food. And I know the Hawker Fair is waiting for us, so on that note, sir, I beg leave to withdraw the amendment. Is Honourable Member given leave to withdraw the amendment? I think leave of the majority is given, the amendment is withdrawn. The question is that a sum of $1,848,794,400 for Head L stand part of the main estimates. As many as of the opinion say aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. The question is that a sum of $1,113,534,200 for Head L stand part of the development estimates. As many as of that opinion say aye. aye. To the contrary, say no. I think the ayes have it. The ayes have it. Order. I feel compelled to take a break now. Order. I suspend the sitting. We'll give ourselves an extra five minutes. We'll take the chair at 3.35 p.m. Order. Order. In fact, extra five minutes, 3.40 p.m. Order, order.